The last part of this series is about building community. Lastly, we ended up looking at community. And to be honest with you, this is not something that I ever anticipated getting into. I'm an engineer. I knew nothing about building community. And in fact, the idea scared the crap out of me. So with our outdoor kitchen and perma blitzes and all sorts of courses that we ended up hosting and, and uh, providing to people, we ended up with this massive network of people that wanted to create change. And I have to say that for every dollar in the bank that I have right now, I've got 10 invested in relationships around me. And it's been absolutely amazing to see this burgeoning community of people who are interested in creating a better world blossom around us. It's, it's been absolutely unbelievable. So we've built gardens, we've hosted perma blitzes, and we've started to actually reclaim our right to build barns within the city, but instead of building barns, we're actually putting gardens. And so every time we do that, we create a little bit more food resiliency within the city, we create more biodiversity, and we create more relationships at these actual blitzes themselves. One of the projects that's emerged out of all of this community is something called Calgary Harvest. And Adrian Buckley of Big Sky Permaculture saw this massive waste stream of apples and fruit in the city and decided to do something about it. And so he created the Calgary Urban Harvest Project, which goes around and gleans fruit. And one third of the fruit that they glean goes back to the homeowner, one third goes to the picker, and one third goes to the food bank. And whatever doesn't get taken ends up going to the farmers market where it's given for donation and those donations go back into Calgary Harvest to support the actual organization itself for the purchase of equipment um, and website and, and all of the other things that have to happen in order to glean that fruit. In 2009 Calgary Harvest harvested close to seven metric tons of fruit within the city itself and the organization has close to 1,200 trees registered within the city of Calgary, and we don't even get to a fraction of those in terms of picking them. So the amount of food that's already in the city that's going to landfill right now, growing on our own trees, is absolutely astronomical. So every city should have a gleaning project, and every city should have a group of volunteers uh, that go out and actually harvest this fruit. And what's really neat about it is since Calgary Harvest has started, most of the fruit that we consume on an annual basis comes from this project. And so when we're in the fall inundated with all this fruit, we're dehydrating it and canning it and freezing it. And right, right now in the wintertime, we're actually just drawing those reserves down, getting ready for the next harvest, which will happen in about six months from now. So if you've never heard about permaculture, and you're probably wondering what that word is, Permaculture is a design system that focuses on the interconnection of community, waste, energy, water, um, and, and brings it together in a way that creates sustainable human habitat. If you think about a beaver, a beaver goes out into the wilderness and it cuts trees down and it builds a dam and it holds all this water back. And some scientists have, have come in and said, well, what the beaver actually does is it creates the 100-year flood event every single year. And some people look at beavers in a really negative way as a pest um, or something that's creating destruction because it's bringing these trees down. But what science is actually proving now is that when a beaver goes in and creates habitat for itself, it ends up increasing the biodiversity around it by orders of magnitude. And that's a really interesting concept. When you look at how humans go in and create habitat, what we do is we destroy the ecology, we take all the topsoil away, we cut all the trees down, we pave the roads, we put up these two by four stick houses, and we end up dramatically reducing the biodiversity, we drain the water out of the landscape, so we actually are ostensibly creating deserts, and then we have to pump our water in, we have to drive our nutrients in in the form of food, we have to buy fertilizer and cut lawns and do all of these things that were being self-managed within that ecosystem. And this is where this myth, this foundational myth is created that humans are inherently destructive. There's lots of evidence to prove it. But the thing is, is that we can look to that beaver or we can look to any other species on this planet that creates habitat in a way that is beneficial to all the life forms around it. And we can mimic that 
and bring it into the way that we build our own systems, the way that we design our houses and the way that we design our landscapes and how we grow our food and we create community. And we can be just as positive as we are negative. And permaculture gives us the tools to do that. So permaculture is not the roof, the rain barrel or the solar panel, but the connections between those elements that makes the difference. And we go into nature and we copy her patterns in the way that we do absolutely everything. So thanks very much for listening to how we've gone about retrofitting our small house in Calgary, Alberta. I hope to hear from you and uh, please share any stories or photos that you have of how you've gone about retrofitting your house. When you start doing this, what you realize is that one person can have an enormous change within their ecosystem if they just start doing stuff. And that's the final myth that I'll talk to you about. There's this myth out there that the problems are so huge, what can one person do about it? Well, you won't actually know what you can do about it until you actually go out and start doing it. And it's usually a lot easier um, and happens a lot faster than you can ever imagine. So go out there and start a garden. Go inspire some people because if we want to make change in the world, we're going to have to make it taste better. It's going to have to be more fun and we're going to have to get people excited and attracted to it as opposed to scaring people into making change.